I'm going to be real with you. This one might piss some people off. I want to talk about bingeability and your podcast and why it doesn't really matter and what does matter instead. Welcome to the More Profitable Podcast with Stacey Harris. I'm Stacey, and this is the spot to learn more about the strategies, tactics, and tools you need to build your more profitable podcast. My team and I work every day with podcasters like you to shift shows from frustrating time sucks to productive members of your sales team, because your show should be built to generate and convert leads. So let's get into it. Do you know the absolute best place to get the news you need each and every month for a more profitable podcast? You're right. It's the podcast newsroom. The podcast newsroom is a private feed where we share what you need to know right now to get better results from your show. So sometimes that's the latest and greatest in podcast news, things that are happening with the podcast players, best practices, stats. And sometimes it's just some things to be aware of because seasonally some stuff hits. Like it's January and we've been talking about beginning of the year things and prepping your show for this year. And we made a couple of predictions for podcasts and some things to care about as podcasters in 2023. So make sure you head over to uncommonlymore.com slash newsroom. Make sure you have access and listen to January's episode before February's episode comes out next week. You can grab access now again at uncommonlymore.com slash newsroom. This one's probably going to be short and sweet because I really want to give you something to chew on. I want to give you something to process through with your show because there has been some talk over the last several months about the bingeability of your podcast and making sure that your podcast is really sticky and really bingeable and people can just consume, consume, consume. And I don't love it because that's not the goal of this show. That's not the purpose of this show. And if, like me, you're looking to sell high-end services, consulting, coaching with your show, you're looking to connect with prospective buyers and move them through the decision-making process so that they attend a workshop, join a retreat, uh, participate in a program, commit to a mastermind, invest in services with you, whatever that may be then it's about moving them through your show and not burying them in your show. These are different goals. Now, if my goal was to maintain downloads and see growth in an audience and stick people to the content because I wanted to be able to sell that attention to a sponsor, I wanted to generate my revenue through listeners listening, then yes, bingeability, baby. Because now we're looking at a more traditional media monetization strategy, right? We're looking at selling commercial time during our broadcast show, selling commercial spots during our stream, you know, between our streaming episodes. We're looking to move them through a process. And so I don't so much care that your podcast is bingeable, I care that your podcast is moving people through what we can call a podcast sales funnel because each of these episodes is built to do something very specific and each of your episodes should be built to do something very specific. This episode, this is a values episode and as always, I'm going to just tell you what I'm doing while I'm doing it. This is a values episode. This is an episode for prospective buyers to be able to hear me talk about how we approach podcasting, how we approach our services, how we as experts see the thing we do for a living. This is going to allow a listener to nod their head along and be like, yeah, oh, I get that. That makes sense to me. Or identify that their goal is bingeability. Their goal is, 
I want to grow my listenership so that I can be selling ad sponsors. I want to take a traditional media monetization path where I can be doing brand partnerships and product placement and all of these influencer, professional content creator kind of things. That's not a a wrong choice. It's just a different choice. And the decisions you make and the strategy behind your content is going to be different. And so you have to decide, do you want to be an influencer or do you want to be a service provider? There's not one better than the other. It's just what there is. And with this content, I'm not looking to be a content creator. I'm not creating content for the sake of content. I'm creating content to help you see yourself in the work we do and move through the decision-making process of deciding if now is the right time for you for podcast strategy or podcast production services and that we're the right fit to work with. And that's what I want to be I want you to be doing with your show. I want you to be helping your listener identify what their frustration, itch, problem, whatever we want to call that is, and that you can solve that. And here's how you approach solving that, solving that problem, scratching that itch, again, whatever language you want to use. When is the right time to do that? Are they in enough discomfort to solve the problem now? Is now when they're ready to take on that solution? And then how to do it. And then they go do it. Now, in full disclosure, there's absolutely active clients of mine who listen to this show every once in a while to every week. But this keeps them connected with the work we do. This keeps them connected with our process, understanding our perspective, helping them question and create their own perspectives because I'm already an expert. I've been doing this for a while. doesn't mean my opinions don't change and evolve. They absolutely do. The nature of everything changes and evolves. Heck, this show looks nothing like it did when it launched nine years ago. What I want you to be looking at, what I want you to be working towards is not a content pit full of fluff and noise where we stick listeners and keep them forever. What I want you to be building is a decision-making process, is a library of sales assets that help you help your leads identify themselves as leads and convert into clients because that's the win-win for both of you. That's where a show really works. That again does not come from bingeability. I could absolutely create a show that I could just stick you in and, and you could just listen forever and it would be great. I'm hilarious and wildly charming. <laughs> and you are too. You could create an endless library of content that people can just swim around in for decades, but it's not going to help them solve their problems and it's not going to grow your business and help you do the work in the world that you want to be doing. It's going to cost you time, it's going to cost you money, and it's going to cause you frustration. You might already be sitting in that experience. (laughs) Because a lot of us get started in podcasting because we're like, well, we've got to create content to get sales. This is how I provide value. So like podcasting is the way I can do it. Full disclosure, that's how this started. I've talked about this a lot. I got sick of writing blog posts. But I had to create content. So I was like, oh, I I like podcasts. I'll try podcasting. And I did. And now it's nine years later. (laughs) And it took a long time to get out of the, but I just have to keep producing content because content is what works, I guess. Content is king, but it's lacking a lot of nuance there. A lot of additional, I wouldn't even say nuance, a lot of additional information. Yeah, content is content. It's great. 
It'll help people pretend to work. I find that to be a big benefit of content. However, to see a shift, to see a change, you have to do something. And so this podcast is built to help you do a thing. And I want your podcast to help your listener do a thing. Identify themselves as a lead. Move through the decisions they need to move through to become a client. Understand what is ready and time for them to take action. And then do the damn thing. Take the action. Because that is where the win-win is. So the next time you hear someone talking about how to make your show stickier, how to make your show more bingeable, I want you to take a beat. And I want you to look at the purpose of that bingeability. Because 100%... I love when someone comes up to me and they say, I have been binging your show. It's fantastic. And do you want to know why I love that? Because they do that on a sales call. They're telling me they did that in preparation of our conversation. They didn't just binge the show for funsies. They didn't just binge the show because I'm so gosh darn charming although we covered that I am. They binge the show because they were moving through my podcast sales funnel. They are moving through the process and assets I have built to help nurture them to a decision. Not just nurture them into feeling like they have absolutely put a little effort into being a better podcaster. That's the difference. That's the shift I want you to be looking for because that is where conversions happen. That's where results come from. And on days where you're feeling real sick of producing content, when you're feeling real over talking to yourself in your office or your closet (laughs) or your bedroom or wherever it is that you record your show, you can return to why. I can look at my client list and see this show paying off. I can look in my inbox, in my DMs on Instagram, in my comments on TikTok, and know this show works and understand why it's working, how it's working, and what I need to do next. And that comes from strategy. That comes from building assets not just episodes. And that's what we do with our clients in production work. That's why we have our quarterly calls. That's what we've been doing on our podcast strategy intensives is building these frameworks, building these assets so that you're not creating an endless bingeable pool of episodes. It's not just content for the sake of content. It is assets that helps you help your listener, help your next client. If you would like some support with this, let's have a conversation. Podcast strategy intensives are open right now. We've got room on our production calendar for some new clients to start with us in February. Head over to uncommonlymore.com slash podcast production or uncommonlymore.com slash intensive That'll give you all the details of either way to work with us. Essentially, the podcast intensives are our quarterly calls with our production clients. So we do the strategy part of it, and then you do the production implementation. Production means you get that strategy time, and then our team handles that production implementation. Sound cool? Sounds cool. All right. I will see you back here next week, which, spoiler alert, be the first episode of birthday month because I do birthday month instead of birthday day and February is my birthday month. So I will see you in Aquarius season. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Remember that content consumption does not make changes. So commit to doing something from today's episode. Maybe it's taking action on what we talked about. Maybe it's reaching out to me and learning more about podcast strategy intensives 
or what podcast production looks like with our team. All of that is over at uncommonlymore.com. And if you haven't yet signed up for the podcast newsroom, I want to remind you that is a great next step. If you're not really sure what comes next, hang out over there, get those exclusive private episodes. That's over at podcastnewsroom.com. And the last favor I will ask, because social proof is endlessly important for sure, is to leave a rating or review for this show. If you go to ratethispodcast.com slash more, that's the easiest way to do it. But I would love to hear what you thought of the show, what you think of the show, and if the show has been helpful for you. I can't wait to chat with you. So this is just the start of the conversation. Reach out so we can keep it going. Talk soon.